today on Judge Faith. A projector in the house isn't always the brightest idea. It has a small um, like theater room with a projector and a nice screen. It was very nice. I um, had to replace the light previously. And this was the, this last time was the second time. In one year when you live there, you replaced the bulb two times. I mean, I don't know where the second one was done, and I don't know why she would do a second one if the first one failed. So you knew she changed the light bulb herself the first time around. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Barbara Nordman is suing her former landlord, Thomas Nelson, for her security deposit and charges for a broken projector. She is joined in court with her son, Shade. Defendant Thomas Nelson claims he's replacing the projector damaged by the plaintiff and only expects her to pay for partial costs. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Nordman versus Nelson. Thank you, Barbara. Barbara Nordman. Yes, ma'am. You are suing the defendant, Thomas Nelson? Yes. For $1,000 for the return of your security deposit and for overcharging you for the cost of a movie projector? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, why don't we start from the beginning and tell me how you know Mr. Nelson. Okay, I rented a house from Mr. Nelson and we had a good, like, tenant, um, landlord relationship. If I had anything that needed to be fixed, he was on it right away. Um, during our walkthrough, it was very pleasurable. Okay, so let's let's step back for a second. So you moved in yes. to the defendant's home. You have a home that you lease, sir? Yes. What kind of house is it? It's a single family home in Verado. It's a, a very nice home, an upgraded community. And you, did you place a listing online? No, I had a real estate agent okay. handle it. Okay, and how long did you live there, ma'am? One year. Who did you live there with? Um, my children, Shade, and my daughters, Summer and Nalia. Did the two of you sign a lease agreement? Yes. yes. Do either of you have a copy of the lease? May I see it? How much was the rent? Do you recall, 15, sir? 20, uh, 15 plus $20 for uh, tax. Okay. And how much did you pay in a security deposit? It was like around 3000 so our security deposit, I believe... I mean, you're, you're suing for your security deposit. You don't remember how much you paid? <laughs> no, ma'am. You say that when you moved out, he did not return all of your security deposit and you're suing him for $1,000, the yes, remainder of your security deposit? Okay, sir, let me ask you, why did you withhold part of her security deposit? Well, it's very simple. Uh, when, when a tenant moves into the house, they're very touchy about how it has to be perfect in every respect. But when they move out, they don't have that same um, inclination, I should say. There were expenditures that had to be done because of the homeowners association. Okay, but the real issue, though, because the part that she's suing about, I think you kept a, a portion of it and you agreed to it. The portion that's in dispute is what you kept for a projector, projector yes, that was yes. in your home. Well, the reason we moved into the home, Your Honor, is it has a small, um, like, theater room with a projector and a nice screen. It was very nice. And, and since I was just with my children, um, so we'd go in there, watch movies, watch TV. And the projector was nice. I On the lease, it states that I'm responsible for half of the replacement of the light bulb. When it in the projector? For the projector. May I see a photo of the theater room? I understand you submitted one to court. Yes. Okay, is that the projector? On the left, yes, ma'am. Okay, and also um, in the lease, it states that I'm responsible for that. Responsible I, for the light the bulb light. in the projector. Yes. Why did you decide to leave the projector in the home? It's part of the selling point or of the lease, and it's a very uh, high selling point because the first person that always looks at the house always rents that house because it has this great theater. The theater is just like any other appliance. When that, when that breaks down, it has to have a professional fix it. That was not that's in the just lease. The, that's just the basics. If the refrigerator breaks down, you have to have a professional fix it. If the air conditioning, you have to have, whatever the, the appliance is, it has to be repaired by a professional. Coming up on Judge Faith, 
It's a $3,500 projector. The issue, she said, I blew the, uh, the bulb blew up. I removed the screws, pulled it out. Also, there was also screws in the light. I removed those. Okay, did you tell him you were ordering a bulb the second time? I did not. I would not let a, a housewife change a bulb and or do anything to have to do with Great. a piece of equipment. Plaintiff Barbara Nordman is suing her former landlord, Thomas Nelson, for her security deposit and money he charged her for a broken projector. Defendant Thomas Nelson said the plaintiff should have called him when she realized the projector needed repairs. I um, had to replace the light previously. This was the this last time was the second time. Um, I sent him the email and I said, this is what I order. All his response was, looks great. Is that true? Yeah, and call me when, the call me when the bulb that. comes that in, true. I'll get it replaced for you. Do you have the email? I do, ma'am. So you say you said that in the email, sir? No, that, that, that was much earlier okay. in the game, much earlier in the process. So the first time you order the bulb, you send him an email, he responds, looks great. And what do you do? Do you install it? Yes, I, he had asked me. I owned a projector in my other home. It's a light bulb. You just take it out and put it back in. I did it several times and he's like, okay. So you knew she changed the light bulb herself the first time around? I knew after the fact. That is not true. I sent you an email with the light that I was changing it. It is true because when, when she called me and said she ordered a light bulb, she had ordered a light bulb. Mm -hmm. May I see that, Barbara? Yes, Your Honor. And so when I, I expected to be called when the, when the bulb came in, because you have to have a professional repair it. Do you, do you really though? People sell, people buy these bulbs all the time online and change the light bulbs. All it is is changing the light bulb in the projector. It's a $3,500 projector. R uh, right, I understand that. it's more that. expensive than my refrigerator. So, sir, so who's the professional, you? So you want to be no, the person no, to come I, in and change it? I would have a professional do it. Where and when do you give her specific instructions about who's supposed to change the light bulb in the projector? In the lease, it also says that there is a projector in the lease, there's a refrigerator in the lease. Those are all appliances. When they are bad, and as she sold you in the past, I come in and repair them with the service company. Was that specifically, I just, I'm trying to understand here, was that specifically communicated to her that when the bulb went out and it needed to be replaced that a professional needed to come in? It was the same, it was communicated in the same way that a refrigerator has to be replaced by a professional. Uh, I, I was with, I worked for a video company for 10 years. I would not let, uh, a housewife change a bulb and or do anything to have to do with Great. a piece of equipment. I would do it myself. Because she's not capable? Because she's a housewife? What does she know? Apparently. Yeah. I'm not right. a mechanic. Exactly. Either. It's a technical <laughs> It's a technical aspect of a, a video thing. What kind of projector? What kind of projector is this? It's a sharp projector. Okay, when was it purchased? It was three years ago it was purchased. Okay. How much did you pay for it? $3,300. Have you ever had to replace a bulb prior to her moving into the home? I, I have five homes with projectors in them. This particular projector. I never replaced this never one. Never replaced the bulb. Okay. The first time she comes to you, because the bulb was replaced twice in the year that she lived there, right? Well, I don't know about that. I, I mean, I don't know where the second one was done, and I don't know why she would do a second one. If the first one failed, then she should have got her hands off of it and left it to a professional to get it straightened out. So you're saying you didn't realize that the bulb had been replaced twice? Oh, no. Okay, you just realized that the projector, something was wrong with it, and you think it's because she put in the bulb herself and not a professional. Who put the bulb in the first time? I did. You did yourself? Yes, ma'am. How did you do that? I removed the screws, pulled it out. Also, there was also screws in the light. I removed those, took the bulb and placed it right back in. If you don't put it in correctly, it doesn't flush on the projector. So I knew it was created. I turned the projector back on. It worked great. And it, when it went out a second time in, in a year, you ordered a new bulb? I did. Okay, and did you tell him you were ordering a bulb the second time? I did not. Okay, so he just wasn't aware of, of the, the second, second 
of the second time you put in the bulb. So then, when do you find out that there's a problem with the projector? When, when the house is brought back to me and said, let's have a walkthrough. What was the issue? What was the problem? The issue, she said, I blew the, uh, the bulb blew up. Did the bulb blow up in the projector? It did, and I did not touch it. It didn't blow, it popped. So I did not. How long after you installed it did the bulb pop? It was probably there a few months. And it popped after a few months? Yes. Okay. So then I realized after he said it needed to be vacuumed out, which nowhere did it say or did I was aware of that. Um, I did not change it. And did you I, inform him when the bolt popped? When during the walkthrough, I said, I did not change the lamp and the projector because it broke. Did you report that to him or did he discover that on his own during the walk? I told him on the walkthrough. How, what was the time frame? When the projector popped, it stopped working to when you did the walkthrough? Two weeks. Okay, so you didn't tell him that the projector wasn't working until he discovered it at the walkthrough, right? Well, I told him about it. But yes. at the walkthrough? Correct. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm not an expert at these kinds of things, but it's not because I'm a housewife. I understand you understand? That. Um, <laughs> it's because. <laughs> Because I haven't I done because I, I haven't done this that. kind of work. So what I did is I called in an expert. Um, there's a lot of special care that's involved when handling the actual lamp. Do you think that caused the bulb to explode a couple of months later? Plaintiff Barbara Nordman is suing former landlord Thomas Nelson for her security deposit and money he overcharged for a projector. Defendant Thomas Nelson says the plaintiff should have notified him when the projector lamp needed to be replaced. So what I did is I called in an expert okay. to come into court and explain to the court after hearing your testimony his expert opinion about what happened with this projector and the light bulb. So right now I'd like to welcome Adam Portelli into court. He is a lighting installer and design technician with over 15 years of experience. Mr. Portelli, have you had the opportunity to hear the testimony? I have, yeah. From both plaintiff and defendant in this case? Yes. And you heard from Mr. Nelson what kind of projector this is and what kind of bulb they needed to be replaced? I have. Anytime you're installing a projector, um, it's not like a household light where you can just kind of climb up a ladder and screw it in yourself. Um, there's a lot of special care that's involved when handling the actual lamp. When you um, say lamp, is that the bulb? Yes, the bulb. Okay. Um, that those deposits from your finger can actually cause the lamp to explode um, because it burns through. So basically you need to have a glove or a paper towel. Um, you know, you need someone who kind of knows how to do that type of installation. When you heard Ms. Nortman's testimony that she didn't use a glove, she didn't cover her hands with anything and she took the bulb out with her own bare hands and installed it, do you think that caused the bulb to explode a couple of months later? Quite possibly, because if a professional were to install that, they would never just use their bare hands. You would always put gloves on. And then if it went out a few months later, that's about the time span. It will, it'll turn on, it'll work for a week or two um, or months, and then it will just randomly go out. Do you find it strange that the bulb had to be replaced twice in one year? Very strange. Uh, those, those lamps will last easily a year or two. Do you think that the problem was the installation? It sounds to me like it could very well have been. Okay, thank you, Mr. Portelli. Right, Clearly, after you put the bulb in the first time, when it went out again and you had to order a new one, you didn't tell him about it, and I think it's because you knew there was a problem. And when you found out that the projector wasn't working. Did you have a technician come in and check it out? I took the projector down. I took it to Scottsdale where there is professionals. There's none where this is. <laughs> in Buckeye, there's nobody there. And I, I had them look at it and they told me that because it blew up in there, because the glass shards were in there, they were gonna have to take the projector apart and clean it, all the shards out of it. That was gonna cost $300, and then the bulb was gonna cost $349. It was getting into too much money with no guarantee. It was no guarantee that it would be fixed? Okay. Well, they said once they did that, then they couldn't find out whether it was completely solved, the problem, or 
not, and it might blow another bulb out. So what did you decide to do? Did you get a new projector? So I decided to buy another projector, a lesser projector, one of lesser quality. So you purchased a second projector. How much did that one cost? $1,149. Do you have proof of that? Yes. May I see it, please? And are you asking her to pay the full price for the second projector? Is that what you did? You kept that full amount of her security deposit? Okay, so I asked her for half of, or $500 is what I asked her for. And the end result, I offered her to pay to her $740 as of a thousand, and, uh, and she turned that down. So I'm asking you, how much of her security, in the end, is this $1,000 that you kept for no, a projector? I gave her back, or I tried to give her back $740. I only kept two hundred. Ma'am, what is the one thousand dollars that you're suing for? That's the amount of the security deposit that you kept. Correct. Correct. Okay. He, so my question to you, sir, is why did you keep a thousand dollars of the security deposit? Because I sent her email seven hundred and forty dollars, and she turned it down. Okay. So you only asked her to pay for half of the projector. Exactly. After the bulb went out the first time and you now know you have to replace it a second time, that should have been a red flag to you because those bulbs should not be going out that quickly. And now, Judge Faith rules. How much of your security deposit was returned to you of the 1895? Well, he wanted to charge me initially $17.44, then he offered me $6.25, and then he offered me $7.40 without providing receipts and or quotes for what he did. You're only suing for $1,000. So for whatever reason, you decided he should keep a part of your security Correct. deposit, right? Correct. Okay, so I'm not deal I'm only dealing with the $1,000 yes, and, and with the projector. That's what I'm going to deal with. Well, you brought a witness with you today? Yes. Your son? Yeah. Shade, why don't you step up? How old are you? I am 18. What do you have to say about this? Um, what I think about the situation is that because there was no actual mention of a professional needing to change the bulb, we have went by our own past experiences with our own past projector that we own currently at our new residence. We have changed the bulb around three times a year, and my dad has done that. Okay, but now you've heard from a professional who says that it probably went out because you use your bare hands. Unfortunately for you, your assumption was wrong. Yeah. It's not normal. Unfortunately. But I appreciate you coming in today and testifying on behalf of your mom. But now you know going forward with projectors, you can't use your bare hands to change a bulb. And I will be telling my father that so we don't have to buy a bulb <laughs> four idea. times a year. <laughs> Sir, based on the testimony I've heard today, ma'am, I think it's reasonable for you to pay for half of the cost of the projector based on the expert testimony I've, I've heard. I no you problem. clearly didn't understand how to change these bulbs and the first time when you when you realized that there was a problem when the bulb went out a second time you should have alerted your landlord immediately and you did not do that based on that I'm finding you responsible for half of the cost of the new projector which is five hundred and seventy four dollars and fifty cents so I'm subtracting that from the one thousand dollars you kept sir and I'm ordering you to return four hundred and twenty five dollars and fifty cents that of her security deposit my that's all ma'am If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.